Welcome back to Round to Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Next to me here is the motor from my 1964 Triumph TR4 that I am rebuilding. You might notice here, I've got a Signy refurbished, rebuilt distributor on here. Had to set the distributor end float, all that kind of stuff. I'll show you how to do that in this video. And I'll give you a little bit close up here on the distributor itself, show you what I had done, and uh, we'll get to it. So thanks for watching. Let's get it sorted. So what we got next on the agenda here, and if you hear that rattling in the background, that's my ultrasonic sink, is we're gonna measure the distributor end float, and there's a pedestal that goes on there. This guy right here that I've already painted up, so that's gonna sit down on there, and you wanna measure the end float. So the end float, you can have it too tight or too loose. If you have it too tight, what'll happen is the gears on this distributor drive gear here, you got this larger gear right here, that's what interacts with the camshaft. The smaller gear up here is what provides speed to the tachometer. What can happen is, is you get that too tight and these gears mesh in kind of too hard with the camshaft. And over time you can wear those out prematurely and maybe even chip something. If it's too loose, what you get is you get too much lateral movement of the distributor and your timing gets all wonky. So it's a pretty tight spec. It's only like five to 7,000, something like that. And uh, it's a little interesting on the way you do it. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a flat washer of known thickness, so I've got to measure the thickness of this. You stick it on the end here, put that back in, put the pedestal on, and then we're gonna measure the gap between the pedestal and the block itself, and then figure out the, uh, the end float that way, and I'll, I'll kind of explain it a little bit better as I get that close. First thing we're gonna do though is this is a brand new washer that I picked up from just the parts bins at the, uh, you know, at the true value or whatever. I'm gonna sand this down with some 100 grit on a piece of glass just to get the uh, the machining scuffing off of it. These uh, stuff's got ridges around it. I don't want that to mess with any of my measurements. So I'll flatten it out real quick, measure it, and then go to town and measuring on the end float. All right, so a nice just old piece of glass here just to have something so I know it's pretty perfectly flat. Any piece of glass will do that's big enough. And I just got my washer here and 100 grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna put it on there and sand it down. And essentially what I want to try to get eventually is I got scratches uniformly around all this thing so that I know that it's catching all the surfaces. So I'll just do both sides. It's not obviously exciting. I'm not going to bore you with it, but I want to get it nice and flat. Got my washer here. Only took a couple of minutes to sand it out. I would recommend getting a new one. I looked through my, you know, spare nuts and bolts and everything like that. And I found a couple that worked, but they were old and misshapen and used and stuff like that. It's just easier to have a nice flat one that you know. So... The only other requirement really is that the inner diameter is a half inch so that the shaft of the uh, distributor drive gear will fit through that. It doesn't really specify how big of a landing zone you have, you need, but you want something that's you know big enough that it's gonna give you a nice flat area. So I just have a micrometer here or a caliper. You just wanna make sure it's zeroed out and we're just gonna check it in various spots. And it looks like about 64 and a half thousandths or so. Pretty consistent all the way around, 64 thousandths. Yeah, so we'll say 64 and a half thousandths for that thickness. So now that's known, we'll stick that, stick it on the distributor guy, drive gear. We're gonna take this over to the motor and install it. All right, so now we got that washer on there. We're just gonna drop this down in here. Well, one thing I'll show you before I do that, you can see how this end here is kind of squared off. It's just got a little uh, blade on it. Well, that's what interacts with the oil pump. So the oil pump's buried down in there. So when you drop this in, chances are that you're not gonna land directly into the groove on the female side of the oil pump. So we're gonna have to make sure that we compensate for that. So put that in there. Now that's what that thing just as I dropped it in, you might be able to see it twist there. That's with it engaging with the camshaft gear, but that's not probably as far down as it can go. So we're just gonna slowly rotate the motor and you're gonna see this thing when that oil pump lines up with this, with this tooth in here, you're gonna see it drop down. Now I don't care where this happens. Now it's spinning because it's engaged with the camshaft. and there it just dropped down. So now that's in with the oil pump. Now I don't care again, the timing, I'm not concerned with that yet. I will have to line this gear up to get the proper timing based on top dead center. So the distributor's lined up and all that. I'm not dealing with that right now. So now that that's fully seated, I know what thickness of that washer is. We'll go ahead, we'll drop the pedestal on. 
Make sure that's on there nice and flat. I'm gonna grab two nuts and just snug them down just so I've got a, a, a permanent or a, or a solid um, attachment there. So now what we wanna measure is the gap between the pedestal and the block. And right here, it's not very big. I'll zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it better. So this gap right there is what we're gonna be measuring. So you need to get a feeler gauge, obviously, and we're gonna measure the distance between those two. And it doesn't matter what this is, you're gonna do some math now after we get this value to figure it out. Or a 30 thousandth and a 32 thousandth, so I'll add those two together, obviously, and I get 62 thousandths. And if I do that math, I get a two thousandths difference. As you would expect, the workshop manual goes and tells you how to calculate this, and one of the examples that it gives is almost exactly what I'm looking at. So it says if your washer thickness is 62 thousandths and your gap is 60 thousandths, then your end flow is two thousandths. Well, that's too tight. The end float spec is three to seven thousandths, so you'd have to put a, a shim in there, and the shims here are just paper to give you, uh, it's bringing you right down the middle, this example is, so you wanna add about three thousandths due to the shim, or from the shim. If you look at my math example, I got a 64 thousandths washer thickness, 62 thousandths gap, so I'm looking at a two thousandths float, which again is too tight, so I've got two pieces of packing, and again, it's just paper, it's just gasket material, and each one of these is not very thick, but probably thick enough. So let's see here, this one uh, is about 55 or five and a half thousandths. So that's kind of thicker than I thought they would be. And this one's four and a half or five thousandths. So we'll use this one and that'll bring us right to the top of the spec. So if anything, it's gonna be a little bit loose, but I still think it's in spec. And who knows, you were talking a thousandths or two here, you know, I, I, who knows how accurate my measurements were. I could have probably used a different feeler gauge, so I'm not gonna be too concerned about it. I'm just gonna use a single uh, gasket material there. Now, unlike what I've been using in the past with the Aviation Forma gasket, I'm gonna use the gasket cinch stuff for this because this is not, not too concerned about oil and everything leaking out of here. So it's just gonna be a simple gasket material. But before I put this pedestal down, I do have to worry about setting the proper orientation on that gear for top dead center. So I'll show you how to do that. I've removed the drive shaft out of here, the distributed drive shaft, and don't forget to remove your spacing washer because that would be bad if you left that guy in there. Now we're going to set that distributor drive gear in the correct position so that the timing of the motor works when we run the distributor. So what the workshop manual tells you to do is find top dead center on number one piston on the compression stroke. This second valve in here is the intake valve. On the compression stroke, you wanna see your intake valve open and shut, and then the top dead center that immediately follows that cycling, that's your compression stroke right before the thing is ready to fire, which makes sense because you want that distributor right almost at top dead center, right, right pointing at number one piston, so that right at that compression stroke when that piston's all the way up and that air-fuel mixture's completely compressed, that's when you want it to fire. So it should all make sense in your head, but you know, it should all make sense in your head. So we're gonna rotate the motor here a couple times until I figure that out. So I'll watch for this cycling and then I'll find the next top dead center. Now, I do have an aftermarket pulley here. I had mentioned that before when I was putting the motor together because I'm doing the fan delete and I've got a harmonically balanced pulley here. I did mark top dead center, but only with a Sharpie marker. I have my original pulley. When all is said and done, this pulley has to come back off because I've got to get the timing gear or the timing chain cover on there properly and get the seal in there and everything like that. I'm gonna sneak on the original pulley real quick just to find top dead center and make sure that all still makes sense or else I might be going back and doing this all over again. Case in point, we're gonna go now and find, like I said, top dead center on the compression stroke and then we'll get that gear in and I'll show you how to do that a little bit more closely. All right, so you're watching this valve cycle here. All right, so now that's opening. So I'm, I'm lucky enough I'm on the compression stroke right away so that you would be sucking fuel in now and now it's starting to shut. So you would be turning off the fuel. So the next top dead center I find on here is where I want to be. And that is right there. So now I am at top dead center on number one piston on the compression stroke. All right, so now that we got the motor set up, we're gonna go in and just drop this guy in and essentially an arbitrary place for now. So what the workshop manual tells you to do is essentially find the spot where this groove that's cut into the top of that guy there, that's where the distributor drive is gonna kinda sit down in and interact with. You want that groove to point in a straight line to the number one push rod tube. 
Well, right now this looks a little bit too twisted this way. So we're gonna pick it up, rotate it a little bit that way till you find the next place where the teeth inter interact. And now I went too far because now that's pushing point to like between number two and three. So you're just gonna play with it now until you get it. This slot, again, this groove pointing right at number one push rod tube, we're as close as you can get it. I'm not worried about the oil pump yet. We'll, we'll take care of that in a second. I'm not worried about engaging the oil pump. That doesn't have anything to do with timing. Now I'm just trying to get that slot to point to the push rod tube. So let's play with it a little bit more here and see if I can get it. You know, that looks like that's it right about there. So I'm just, you just eyeball it. It's, it doesn't have to be exact. This actually, actually it looks like it's pointing in between. Let me see if I can get a little better than that. So unfortunately it looks like I'm gonna be like right in between. So I'm gonna pick the one that's a little bit better. And I'm thinking it's gonna be that one. I'm looking at the workshop manual, even though it's not a photograph, if it's anything, I would say it points a little bit forward of that push rod tube anyway. So we're gonna leave it there and call it good. Now, I need to engage the oil pump, so we're just gonna rotate the motor like we did, and then this is gonna drop down at some point. I think it's going right now. Yep, there it went. So now that's engaged. So we're gonna come around the top dead center again, see what it looks like. This is number one on the compression stroke. And magically enough, it hasn't changed. It actually looks a little bit better now that it's engaged with the oil pump, that's weird. Maybe it's the rotation of it. I don't know. But that works. So now we'll go ahead and we'll seal it up with some gasket cinch, put that piece of paper down, put the pedal still down, tighten it down and get it snug just so everything kind of lines up there. And then uh, that'll be all set. So I'm using this gasket cinch stuff and it's almost like the paper or the uh, plastic cement or whatever you called it when you're in grade school. It's almost like that stuff. Not quite as aggressive, I guess you could say, for one way to put it, as the, um, the form of gasket. It's not as thick, it's more of a glue than it is an actual sealer or a gasket stuff. I use this all throughout the Spitfire, and I have leaks, which is kind of why I went to the form of gasket stuff. But, like I said, I don't really expect a whole lot of uh, oil splashing up in here. So I'm gonna go with the gasket cinch stuff. Again, I'm putting that this stuff on both sides of the gasket and both sides of the metal. And not putting this down permanently yet, but tight enough to get the gasket to seal. Still gotta do the zinc plating of these so much like i did with the oil filter i'll get it down get it tight and then go on and after the zinc plating's done come back to it all right and this stuff like i said is pretty much just like that cement that we had in grade school so once it dries you can kind of rub it with your finger and it'll peel right off so this is the drive gear for the tachometer eventually it goes in so this fits in like that, and then this gear interacts, interacts with that smaller gear that I showed you on the, driver, on the distributor drive gear, and then here's where the cable would screw in. So I just took it apart and cleaned it up. You notice that there is grooves cut in this, so it does uh, provide some lubrication. And this little hole right here is where a little set screw goes in. So I'm gonna go ahead, apply my assembly lube to this, and get this guy in, and that'll be essentially the last thing prior to doing the distributor itself. And I did try to black oxide all of the bolts and nuts and stuff like this, and the black oxide did not turn out well. So I'm going to uh, eventually redo that stuff, but not right now. So the distributor I sent out to advanced distributors out in uh, Minnesota, I believe. And for $197, he took what looked like a very sad and very sorry distributor and turned it into a nice, shiny new thing. Uh, it looks like a lot of the internals are either replaced or rebuilt. The, uh, the electronics are all new, new condenser, new points, good high quality points. Rebuilt the vacuum advance and then put it on those old sun machines where you can time it. And then based on what I've got going on in the motor, so I sent him my cam specs, my uh, the enlarged pistons and all that kind of stuff, he times it based on that information and then sends you back the distributor with his recommended timing. So obviously I've got a little while before I can try this, but for you know, 200 bucks, I essentially have an original but 
refurbished and rebuilt professionally, not me just trying to guess and see what I can make happen uh, distributor. So to me, more than worth it. I'm not gonna keep this here with the motor. I'm gonna take this back home and keep it nice and safe because it's a little too pretty for the uh, conditions that we're in right now. But, uh, but hopefully it'll be very nice and functional when we get to that point. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Well, distributors, pedestal and end float setting and all that kind of stuff, obviously important to make sure that you're not uh, chasing timing problems or causing potential damage to your car. But uh, it's not that difficult, but it is definitely something you need to pay attention and do. So thanks again. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.